Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Trevor. Uh, I've been working with Dr. Gopal uh, on a project investigating alternatives uh, to solvent methods in microfabrication. Um, next slide, please. So a little bit of background on my project. Uh, on the micro and nano scale, decontamination is very important uh, as this and that size devices are highly susceptible to contaminants uh, and can, can lead to a device not functioning properly or even failing. Uh, and this is and decontaminating devices is especially difficult on featured surfaces as particles can get trapped in like corners or cavities. Uh, and traditionally, this work is usually done, most commonly done with solvents. Uh, and solvents are also used in other processes in microfabrication, um, such as thin film liftoff. Uh, thin film liftoff is pretty commonly used to create electrodes and adhesion layers. Uh, and traditional methods can leave behind artifacts called fences. So if you look at the top right figure, uh, that's a worst case scenario uh, where a you have uh, undesirable vertical, vertical features on the edge of the pad that go all the way up uh, to the top of the photoresist photo layer that's made to create them. Um, normally, you want to eliminate them um, for their use in like layering. So besides risk in uh, fabrication, um, using solvents uh, can be difficult to handle in a large volume due to their flammability and their health hazards. Uh, and this is especially important in microfabrication where you work with some particularly nasty solvents. Um, so reducing um, use of solvents in a lab is generally desirable. Uh, and we're obviously not the first people to investigate a solution to this. Um, so people have worked with like say supercritical CO2 um, to remove or for decontamination and they've used like mechanical polishing to remove fences. Uh, the problems with these though is that uh, they're effective but they can be pretty expensive. They can be pretty harsh in the sample um, and they might introduce um, extra complexity in your process or an opportunity for error to happen while you're working on your sample. Um, so in search of a solution, we ended up uh, looking at first contact polymer. Uh, it was invented by uh, Dr. James Hamilton, who's actually a, UW, uh, a professor at UW Plyfield Chemistry Department. Um, and he invented the polymer to address uh, deficiencies in solvent treatment for cleaning optical surfaces. So the polymer that we're using first contact, it's chemically inert and it cures to a solid film that can be peeled off and disposed of without any other treatment. So you just can peel it off and throw it in the garbage. There's no other processing you have to do. Um, so what we did in, our, in this project is we investigated the FISC of first contact to address issues in microfabrication uh, based around solvents. Uh, and we focused our efforts into areas where we believe first contact would have the most impact. Uh, and those three areas are the removal of particles from cavities, uh, the cleaning of low concentration solvent residues and into thin film liftoff. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, particle decontamination was actually our earliest project in our foray into this. Um, and it's just to use first contact to remove particles from cavities uh, on the micro scale. Uh, so we fabricated, we fabricated our cavities using reactive ion etching to create vertical sidewalls of different aspect ratios and also potassium hydroxide etches uh, to create an anis anisotropic features uh, that are more pyramidal in shape and, probably, and usually a bit deeper. Uh, we chose titanium dioxide as the contaminant that we applied to these samples. Uh, because it was easy to identify uh, visually with SEM and easy to verify using EDS. Uh, and the nanoparticles uh, that we, of the titanium oxide that we had were of similar size to clean room dust, uh, about 25 nanometers. Um, and you can apply it very regularly uh, using a dilute solution. So it was the ideal choice for us. Um, and if you look at the two figures, uh, on the left side, you see uh, the interface between a contaminated area and a non-contaminated area where the polymer was applied across the sample. Uh, the whiter areas where titanium dioxide is and the darker area is clean silicon. Uh, and you can see that it's a pretty distinct difference there. Um, the right side a little less so because the contaminant levels are much lower, um, but the right hand column is, um, was cleaned using uh, acetone sonication followed by an isopropanol rinse in DI water, uh, which is the common solvent method that we use in our lab. Uh, and that's compared to first contact, uh, which uh, fully cleaned the sample as you can see in the after photo in the right side. Uh, next slide, please. So the other decontamination um, area that we looked at was cleaning um, or removing thin solvent residue films. Um, so using the OJ spectroscopy system at uh, UW-Eau Claire, uh, we, were, we tested unpatterned silicon wafers uh, for, our, for these first tests that we're doing on it anyways. Um, and we were able to obtain a quanti quantitative measurement by comparing the carbon signal to the silicon signal um, from OJ. Um, and the, plots, the plot on the left is uh, describing the residue left behind after each treatment. So we have a wafer fresh out of the box, uh, and that's the carbon 
residue on that. Uh, and then we did an SC1 clean, so a standard clean one uh, by RCA. Um, and that replaces, the that replaces the native oxide layer on the silicon wafer. Um, and from there, we can apply uh, the solvent method and also first contact. And you can see the remaining residue after that based off of a clean sample. Um, so first contact is leaves a lot less residue uh, than the solvent, um, but neither both of them are around the area of just a freshly clean wafer. So neither are like catastrophically bad, but first contact is distinctly better in this regard. Um, and the next test that we did using OJ uh, was um, looking at the uh, decontamination to FIAC um, from a solvent film. So what we did is we did another SC1 clean on a number of samples and then we contaminated it using acetone. So we just put some acetone on the sample and allowed it to air dry, allowing the ambient air to decontaminate our sample. Um, and from that, we, can, we cleaned those samples using um, first contact and also our solvent methods, which is an acetone isopropanol rinse. And both of those methods brought it back down to around the area of a fresh, of a fresh wafer, uh, though first contact was marginally better. Next slide, please. Uh, and the third experiment that we did uh, was focused on thin film liftoff. So in microfabrication, as I was mentioning, uniform features are very important, uh, especially when you're layering layers on top of each other. So thin films are used in adhesion or as, as an adhesion layer or as a processing step. And the premise around liftoff is that a thin film is applied to a sacrificial photoresist layer that has been patterned. Uh, and then by, after you apply the thin metal film, you can remove the photoresist layer and you end up with these pads on the surface. Um, so this is normally done using acetone sonication or sonication in some other solvent. Um, but we aim to replace that step using first contact. Um, so when we did that, we found some very interesting um, results. So if you look at the, the left hand side of that set of figures, um, that, is the, that is the results um, via AFM uh, using acetone sonication. So you can see that there's pretty distinct fences on there. Uh, that's about 10 nanometers of chrome and the height of the fences themselves are thicker than the, or higher than the layer is thick. Uh, and on the right side is first contact, which compared to the acetone has almost no fences, though it does have very limited ones. So you can see a pretty distinct difference, which is um, a great result for first contact. Um, however, we did find that uh, for, for chromium films that were thicker than 30 nanometers, um, first contact began to become less reliable. Uh, and we often got um, pieces of the uh, deposited film to sink below the photoresist and actually deposit onto the sample where they're not supposed to be. Um, but it, is a, it is still works well for thinner films, essentially. Uh, next slide, please. So in the applications we tested, first contact outperformed solvent methods in a number of the situations. Um, so for particle contamination, uh, first contact removed titanium dioxide contaminants more effective than solvents in almost all cases. Um, for removing organic um, residue uh, from solvents, first contact was comparable to a solid rinse, but it did leave a lower residue, which was nice. Um, and for liftoff, it was not necessarily like a, it, it gave a different result than solvents would, uh, but that result is more preferable as it reduces the amount of post-processing you'd have to do. However, it was not effective for thicker films. Additionally, it should be noted that the uh, cure time for first contact is, can be upwards of 30 minutes, which may be an issue for uh, certain applications that involve multiple processing steps if they wanted to use this. So in the future, we, wanted to get, we would like to continue this work um, and especially in bring or investigate um, solvent residue in a more, um, in featured services, so along more of the lines of the particle contamination um, geometries. Uh, and we'd also like to investigate first contact um, in its applications to vacuum systems to see if it can reduce the pump down time. Um, yeah, and lastly, I'd like to thank all the faculty advisors and support that helped this project. Uh, without this, uh, it would not have been possible. So thank you all. Great, thank you, Trevor. All right, now for any questions that anyone might have, if you could please turn on your camera and unmute yourself. I guess I'll go, although it, it says I can't turn on my camera, Tony. Um, okay. But anyway, uh, all right, there we go. Okay, um, it was a great talk, Trevor. Uh, quick question, do you know what the current cost of uh, first contact is? I know it's more than acetone, but like, 
It's, it's more than acetone. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have it donated by um, Photonic Cleaning. Um, so I have not had to purchase it. Um, I, I don't remember right offhand. It's not like, it's not like outrageously expensive, but it is, it is more than an equal volume of solvent. I mean, I assumed I just didn't know, you know, is it a hundred times more? Is it a thousand times more expensive? I, I don't think it's within that magnitude. I think it, like for, um, if you've seen the first contact kits, it comes with like a couple of different vials of it. Yeah. Um, I think that's in the, I think it's like under $200, but I, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. 